Yo, yo, I'm Curious A Gaming, and welcome to another video. We're going back to back because I'm on the grind right now. Not really. I'm just very busy, and I might as well introduce this to my schedule as well. I need a damn break soon. <laughs> but anyway, though, today we're going to be very briefly going back to Zelda. Now, originally I said that we're going to be talking about the Oracle games alongside Link's Awakening. This is today's video. But, um, after playing Link's Awakening, I'm talking about this version, not this version. Um, let's just say I am saving those Oracle games um, for when we go back to Zelda. Because if I do those now, I am going to hate my life. Why? Well, let's talk about the game. Link's Awakening released on the Game Boy in August of 1993 in America. The game was developed by Nintendo's EAD, which is the same team behind all of these games. Yeah, we talking some big guns here. The game takes place directly after A Link to the Past, and focuses on Link having to gather musical instruments in order to awaken the island's windfish. This originally was supposed to be a port of A Link to the Past, but after some time, the game turned into what we got today, and you can thank Twin Peaks for that. Seriously, look it up. This game would eventually get a re-release for the Game Boy Color on December 15th, 1998, which fixes some stuff present in the Game Boy original, such as the graphics which is now fully in color, and fixing the original game's balancing issues. But it also adds a new dungeon, which is actually pretty neat. The game overall was a critical and commercial success, and combining both versions together, the game sold over 6 million units worldwide. And like every Zelda game, it's often considered to be one of the best video games of all time. Alright, but let's go and get started with this review, and for the most part, it's like A Link to the Past, but... Let's just say the story is very compact. Link's Awakening is a game where story can be summed up as being, um, very weird. After beating Ganon, Link goes to other countries in order to train against possible future threats. While traveling by ship, he gets caught in a bad storm and crashes his ship onto a mysterious island known as Koholint Island. After getting his sword back, he comes across a mysterious owl who taxes Link to find eight musical instruments and play it to this giant egg if he wants to go home. Simple, right? Uh... As Link goes through his journey to obtain the eight instruments, he comes across some of the strangest shit imaginable. He saves a chain chop from a group of monsters, learns a song from a fish, and for some reason, learns a song from the final boss of Super Mario Bros. 2, US Edition. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Also, he guides a ghost back to his resting place, and so much more shit that is just... This game is really weird. After getting the sixth instrument, Link comes across an ancient ruined mural that states that the island that he's on is a dream world created by the windfish, which is in this giant ass egg. Oh god, it just keeps on getting weirder and weirder. After resurrecting the fucking dead and getting the last two instruments, Link manages to awaken the windfish, but not before having to defeat the nightmare causing the events of the entire game. He fights a shadow version of past enemies and eventually faces Deftal, the one responsible for everything. Link manages to defeat him and goes through a flight of stairs into an absolute acid trip. During said acid trip, the Alvi Cassia reveals itself to be the spirit of the windfish, who in turn is a giant ass whale. The Windfish instructs Link to play the Battle of the Windfish in order to wake him up, and after doing so, Koholint Island ceases to exist, and Link ends up lying on some driftwood in the middle of the ocean, as if he dreamed everything. What the fuck did I just play? This game, ladies and gentlemen, is an absolute trip. Everything seems normal at first, and then boom, it snowballs into some other shit. Like, please explain to me why the hell the majority of Mario characters are in this game. Nintendo, please explain yourself, please. And don't get me started on the people who are even weirder, plus, there's talking animals in this game. Jesus Christ. But nonetheless though, the story is pretty small for a Zelda game. I do like the weird characters as they bring out a level of goofiness that I have yet to see in a Zelda game. Dude besides Wind Waker. <laughs> and the environment itself is really, really weird. And I guess they took their inspiration from Twin Peaks to a whole new level. Uh, now to the gameplay, which for the most part is like a link to the past. There's limited in some parts. Being that this game was originally meant to be a port of Link to the Past, everything you've seen from that game is seen here, but on a smaller scale. 
Link can still move in eight different directions, swing his sword up, down, left, and right, and can do a spin attack. Most of the items from A Link to the Past is in this game, is specifically the hookshot, boomerang, magic rod, bow and arrow, and power bracelets. But now Link has a new item, which is a feather, which lets him jump. So you're telling me this man can jump the whole time, but it only requires him a feather to do so? What the fuck? There's also some additional items that are more or less power-ups, such as this triangle, which can increase your attack, and this acorn. That can increase your defense, but they go away after being hit a couple times. However, an issue that I have with Link's Awakening is due to the lack of additional buttons, and for other reasons that I can't fathom, you have to constantly switch between items. Meaning your sword and shield are equivalent items that can get switched with another item, and you have to do this constantly throughout the whole entire game in order to solve puzzles. That isn't going to be annoying at all. You see, this wouldn't have been an issue if the sword, shield, pegasus boots, and the power bracelets weren't equivalent items like in A Link to the Past. And this is even weirder as the Zora flippers aren't equivalent items, yet these items are the fuck? If anything, this shit makes the game a lot more annoying to progress through because of all the micromanagement. Oh, speaking of progression, the game is a guide game from beginning to end, and the reason for that is because the puzzles for getting inside the dungeons are cryptic as hell. And there's also a trading mechanic. In Link's Awakening, you may come across a roadblock that requires a certain item. In order to progress through the game, you have to find that item in order to trade with people to get to your next destination. However, you won't know this unless you use a guy, and overall, there's about, mmm, eight or so people you gotta trade with in order to get those certain items, to trade with them, and yada yada yada. For the dungeons themselves, again, they're just like A Link to the Past. Each dungeon has a puzzle to solve in order to get to the boss, and you have to find a special equipment that Link can acquire in order to solve said puzzles. Now, the majority of your items can be found in dungeons, but the other items can only be found by doing a side quest, trading an item with someone, and or just stealing, okay, wait, 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 I mean, buying it at the store. By the way, if you steal an item, you can get called a thief throughout the entire game, and even if you go back to the shop owner and give back his stolen Steve goods, He smokes your ass with the power of Zeus's lightning. Ugh, scary. The dungeons themselves have some pretty cool mechanics, but just like in A Link to the Past, you might need a guide in order to solve some of the late game puzzles. In the dungeons, there's also side-scrolling mechanics, which... Okay, wait. Um, uh, why is there a Goomba and Dwamp here? Why? As for the bosses themselves, there are many bosses that after beating them can create a portal to transport you back into the beginning of the dungeon, which is so great since these dungeons will make you backtrack a lot. And as for the actual bosses, they can range from, okay this is pretty easy to, oh, this one's a little tough, not too bad, to, fuck this bird, I am turning that bitch into some roast chicken! Afterwards, everything else is standard, get a hard down and increase your health after beating the boss, and collect that dungeon's instrument. In terms of everything else, the game is still the same as it was in the Link to the Past. I feel like I've been saying that throughout this whole entire review, okay anyway, the island while smaller in scale to Hyrule is as lively yet weirder than Hyrule itself, but also has a number of things to do, like looking for the heart containers, side quests, and exclusive to this game, the seashells to collect. First of all, the side quests doesn't really feel like side quests, instead they feel like the next step into getting an item to trade with, or the next step into getting inside a dungeon and uh, yeah, these, these suck. And second, these seashells are some bitches to get, yet are optional. Across the island, there's these seashells, which after collecting enough of them, gives you a seashell sword that's more powerful than the base sword you got. Now, do you need to collect these seashells? No, unless you want to make the game slightly easier. For my playthrough, I straight up ran through the shit, as there's an alternative way to making the game easier, the color dungeon. This dungeon was previously exclusive to the Game Boy Color version of Link's Awakening, and after completing it, you can get either the blue tunic, which increases the damage you can take, or the red metal, which can increase the power you deal. And for the most part, my playthrough consisted of me having the blue tunic and using the level 1 sword, as other items you collect have a lot of utility and can easily beat enemies and bosses. By the way, the boomerang is absolutely fucking broken in this game. If you want to test it out, then uh, play this version of the game. And you'll see exactly what I mean. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Well, um, I have to take the glasses off for this. 
This was a um, very interesting game. Um, okay, uh, what's my world final thoughts about this game? I don't know what the fuck to say. <laughs> I uh, honestly don't know what to say. Link's Awakening has a ton of great ideas, many of which we'll see in later games. As weird as the Coho Island was, it made the adventure a little more enjoyable and funny. The graphics look really nice on the Game Boy Color, the colors are saturated, and a lot of the characters are distinct from one another in design. I enjoyed the soundtrack and especially love the boss theme and dungeon theme, but I swear to god if I hear another enemy get hit, or this fucking power up jingle, I'ma lose my shit. And the gameplay of course is top notch. But that's my main problem with the game. The gameplay is full of micromanagement, which on paper works for the Game Boy's limited control scheme, but in action, it completely kills the pace of the game and damn near almost killed my enjoyment for it. But then, 2019 happened, and we ended up getting a remake of Link's Awakening. God damn it. The remake fixes a lot of issues with the game while still keeping the charm of the original, and it's extremely adorable, like look at my boy Link here. I wanted to play and review this version, but because of financial responsibilities, I had to settle with the Game Boy Color version, which was fine as it was, just that damn micromanagement. So, um, should you play Link's Awakening? And to answer that, yes and no. Why? Allow me to explain. If you plan on playing the original Game Boy version, then HELL no! Are you trying to hate yourself? But if you're playing the deluxe version, then eh, it's so-so. While it fixes a lot of issues from the original and adds new content, it still has the micromanagement from before. Now, if you want to fully enjoy the adventure and not have to deal with the micromanaging bullshit or any other issue that this game will present to you, or in general just don't want to have to buy a Game Boy Color or have to try to find the game online and stuff, um then my opinion is that if you do have $60 laying around, uh, buy the Switch version of Link's Awakening. Normally I will tell you to either emulate it or just, you know, just wait for a price drop, but no, if you really want to play this, buy it. <laughs> With that, thank you guys so much for watching the video. So, like I said before, we're not going to be talking about these games. Instead, we're going to be doing two licensed games to somehow celebrate Halloween in October, even though... The second last two video prevented me to prevented me from wanting to do more horror games. College is tough, <laughs> very tough. But yeah, so the first game that we're gonna be reviewing is going to be a little. Actually, I'm not even going to disclose the details of these two games. Just know that one made me want to jump out the window, and one for NES game is scary as shit, and it also was inspired by this game. Just a little hint, so prepare yourself. <laughs> But anyway, though, thank you guys so much again. Uh, as always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay safe and stay by, my guy. That took way too many takes to do. <laughs>